Hi, Rick. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can. Looking good. Thanks All right. for joining us today. I'll go back just a bit. Yeah, same. I'm outside today on my uh, deck here in Pennsylvania. Nice. Well, I'm here in Burlington, Ontario, Canada, in the uh, the the southern part of my studio where it's it's the guitar area. The recording area is up to my left. I yes, and I see those guitars. Um, that's quite a collection there, Rick. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of a disease, although, you know, uh, obviously in my rock star years that it sort of become, uh, I had hundreds, like literally, it was nuts. This is, I'm down to about 50 now, and it would never get any bigger than this ever again. It might whittle down over time, you know, um, but uh, yeah. Well, I, 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 I recognize the double neck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's sort of uh, uh, would it be easier to move this or? Uh, no, nah, yeah, I, I could see from here. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of tellies here. That's okay. sort of my late my latest infatuation has been Telecasters, and behind me you can't see them, but there's Les Pauls there. I that see. Yes, sort of what I used to. Look. And these are all the acoustics and arch tops that you, when my wife moved uh, when my wife and I moved here, we downsized, and then. Uh, from my studio and, and storage areas in the, in the old house, uh, there were lots of guitars. So I went, I sort of made a big section and, uh, and down in the basement and said to my kids, four kids, and I said, you know, go and pick two or three of the guitars you like and pick a gold or a platinum record. And then everybody must build a shrine to your old man in your, in your houses so that, you know, when your friends come visit, they'll go, what's this? Oh, your old man! Oh, he played. Oh, he played in Triumph. Oh, oh, look at this white flying V! Isn't this great? You know, so um, yeah. So so that yes, helped well, me winnow it down a bit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, it looks like you're pretty stocked, and like I said, I really appreciate you doing this. David made it presents the legendary Rick Emmett. You know, the last time I saw you was on tour. I actually, as a promoter, I had you in Bucks County, uh, in Pennsylvania, with Dave Dunlop. I think that yeah. was like. 2016 and it was sold out like all of your shows back you know the, your solo shows and and with dave all those shows no matter where you played if you looked at the numbers they sold out i think that that speaks for itself rick <laughs> yeah you know and I, I really enjoyed uh touring with dave and in that format it was a very easy kind of a way to uh, still keep my hand in and be doing it and, and dave didn't want to give it up but uh, I've gotten to the point where I was burning out on just the travel and, and uh, um, having to, you know, bring it night after night. And, and it was more just airports and hotels. I had enough, you know, and I was starting to have anxiety issues and health things. So um, Dave would obviously, he'd, he'd still love to go back out and do it, you know, but he's a younger man than me. So yeah, I, I totally can relate. Trust me, it's, it you know, the traveling part, it's never easy. But, you know, today, um, it's a very important day. Your your memoir is out today, right? Lay it on the line, a backstage yeah. pass to Rockstar Adventure, Conflict, and Triumph out today, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, you know, we live in a digital universe. So, you know, in truth, one of the only things that I got, a, uh, a, I just got an email from my a publisher. They said, Ah, the audio book. Here's your uh, code to uh, you can download the. And I'm anxious to hear what an actor has done reading my words. You know that'll be interesting to me. Um, but as far as the book goes, you, you know people could have ordered it on Amazon. You know, um, two months ago. You know, so and in fact, when the the, the printer got the books done and the, the cartons of them arrived here at my house, and it was like. Hey, Rick, remember you made a deal with the merchandise guy? You got to sign 100 for this guy and 200 for that guy. And I'm going, oh, yeah, right. Uh, you know, so uh, you know, those that was weeks ago, too. So you go, well, the book's already kind of out, you know, and I've already been doing interviews now for, you know, a couple of weeks. So it's like, eh, you know, the digital world is such that it, it, something just kind of, you know, they call it, it drops, you know, oh, it dro and it dropped on the Internet, you know, months ago. Sure, sure. But it <clears throat> 
again, I have my copy now, so I'm really excited about the book and looking forward to reading it. You, you mentioned, you know, yeah. an audio book and I, you know, I, some time back I had the Keith Richards autobiography done and the audio version was done by Johnny Depp. So, oh, so yeah, you know, it was, it was pretty interesting. So, you know, that's a cool thing, but this, I'm sure this book, you know, starts out with you as from your humble beginnings all the way through, obviously, you know, in triumph, the trials and tribulations in, in triumph, and then you leaving the band, and then your very successful solo career, going out playing all these cool genres acoustically. Again, like I said earlier, just really you cornered that market and continued success. I mean, you know, can you tell us like, I mean, look, the, the triumph era was spectacular. You had some great, you know, releases. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to see the the band on the Allied Forces tour at the Tower Theater in Upper Derby, and I was in the third row. And boy, man, that show was it was off the charts, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, I, I I've been I'm doing these, you know, uh, interviews and these uh, podcasty kind of things, and you know, you're my third one today. But uh, one of the guys asked me about, you know, highlight moments and stuff. And, and certainly that Allied Forces album and that tour, that was another big kind of leap for the band. Just because it wasn't just that. It was that there were songs like Magic Power, Fight the Good Fight, you know, uh, that were on that record. That kind of took the band yet to another level at AOR Radio in the States. And so that yeah. sort of makes it. And then that was MTV was happening. And, then, and that album became, oh, you know, MTV was really treating us like we were one of their priority acts, you know. Uh, yeah. We didn't last very long in that, you know, as the world became more Duran Duran, as it were, you know, uh, we, we kind of lost that status. But uh, certainly that was, you know, yeah, you, you were getting into the band right when there was kind of, it's meat and potatoes, you know, years. Although, you know, we still had some uh, uh, growth ahead of us. Uh, the Thunder 7 album in 85 was maybe probably, that was probably our biggest tour, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. We had our own private yes. jet for that one because we got a, a Pepsi sponsorship in Canada and Budweiser in the States. So it was, you know, there was some money to chuck around to be able to do it right. So we had our own Learjet. It wasn't ours. We just rented it, you know. But I once did a thing where I was uh, riding in a, a limousine going from L.A. out to uh, Vegas in, in, one night in the desert after a show because the other guys were hanging around to do some promo. And I thought, hey, if I take the car, like, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow and I won't have to travel and, you know, so make tomorrow's Vegas gig easier. So I'm riding in the car and it's like uh, midnight and I'm, I'm probably KLOS. They're playing the Triumph Allied Forces album as a, uh, like the midnight, you know, full album thing. And so uh, when I hear it on the radio, I say to the driver, hey, turn that up. I, I go, hey, that's that's me on the radio on KLOS. I go, man. And, you know, I think I literally had a, a crystal glass with champagne or, or a scotch in it sitting in the back sipping. And so I've got the glass of scotch and I'm listening to myself on the radio. I'm riding this limo, you know. The, the moon roof is, you know, there's probably a full moon. I may be making that up, but nevertheless, you know, it's like, sure. And, sure. and I say to the guy, man, you know, does it get any better than this? And he looks at me in the mm -hmm. rear view and he says, and this is the truth. He looks and he says, yeah, man, just remember, this is just a rented car. And I went, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, it, it definitely, you know, broke the ban open in the U.S. I mean, I actually came on board, you know, another great obviously band out of Canada with Rush when they came out with you know all the world's a stage but you know somehow I, I got a friend of mine turned me on to just a game and I was hooked I'm like because I'm like okay your guitar playing and then the vocals I'm like and then I found out you're doing both I'm like and then you wrote like you know lay it on the line that was yours you know I'm like who is this guy I'm like and then I was hooked you know progressive power and then obviously allied forces and and you know never surrender etc but i mean i think you're you're uh look gil and mike they're amazing in triumph and you know and i always go back to the pre you know the previous release before just a game when you know gil covered you know rocky mountain way but when you get to just a game your songs your vocal tracks gave it more of a like a more commercial sound 
You know, I, I think that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that sort of became one of the, you know, there's probably countless wedges that exist, you know, in a band that starts out and it's three musketeers, you know, uh, but certainly the fact that the public kind of embraced Rick Emmett songs and Rick Emmett vocals and, and radio did. And then of course, now the record company is making noises that they're embracing this too, because, and then the other guys in the band are going, well, wait a second, you know, uh, how do I get more of me in there? You know, and you're going, yeah. So that, you know, success sometimes is breeding its own uh, things, wedges that, you know, get driven in between the, the components to, you know, pull the three musketeers apart. But, uh, and there's no denying the fact, you know, here we are, you know, decades and decades after the fact and the, 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 the triumph songs that ended up being the evergreen ones were songs that I wrote and songs that I sang, you know, magic and fight and play it. And, and, you know, even the, the, the ones that are the next tier down, like ordinary man and, and, uh, I mean, those uh, acoustic tours that you were talking about with Dave, like I used to close every night with Suitcase Blues. It's a song that's kind of stayed with me all of my life because it was a song that had something in it. It wasn't really about being rock band, we're blowing up the world kind of. It was It was a very different kind of, it was Rick as a musician saying, hey, you know, this is kind of the range of my talent and my ability. And I'm going to try and, and service it. I'm going to try and utilize it as part of who, who and what I am. And Triumph was willing to, you know, uh, give me enough rope to hang myself. You know, we, that was a nice thing about it, but only to a point. And then over the years, it was, no, we're not, we're not indulging that anymore. You know, so then at that point, I was like, okay, I, you know, I think, I think my ride on this roller coaster is over. You know, sure. I'm, <laughs> the choices that I made after I left it, uh, you know, when you're talking about those kinds of shows, and yeah, when we would go through New England, Dave and I, and be able to play all those gigs, the thing that I was taking advantage of was the stuff that was sort of intrinsic to who I was as a musician, as an artist. And when you make those choices, sometimes you are making choices that are, they're going to limit your audience they're going to shrink it you're you're now going to be playing much more smaller intimate kinds of places uh, uh you're going to be um you know I, I started to favor acoustic over electric i didn't really band gigs you know the whole idea of having to wear uh in-ear monitors and you know deal with the fact that it's sort of going to be sound check was going to last for an hour i was going i like it when sound checks are about seven minutes <laughs> yes like, yeah I just check my level through the monitor and sing a couple of things to check the reverbs and go, yeah, good. We're good. All right. Great. So yeah. I, anyhow, yeah. you know, uh, I, I never felt any regret about leaving behind band stuff in order to become, you know, a, an acoustic, eventually an acoustic duo guy. Like that, that, that worked for me. I, I was perfectly content with that. No, I, I'll say uh, absolutely. Uh, That's your first release, solo release in 1990. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, <laughs> you know, getting back to the thing, I, I, you know, the, the legacy of triumph was great. I mean, you guys did the us festival and then you did reunite a couple of years ago for Sweden rock and you know, the legacy is there. It's, you can't deny it. You know, you guys had, had the documentary and now you have this memoir and you know, you, some things can't be revisited. So I think that, you know, you've preserved that legacy of the band. Then you have your whole legacy in the band and away from that band, like like we talked of the acoustic run and all your your tutorial stuff, the great guitar work that you've done in so many different styles. It's you know this is a great you know thing. You have the book out now, and I'm sure you're doing what you want to do and not try to. Sometimes you can't go back and revisit the past. You know, I mean, you can you can preserve it, but you can't repeat it. You have to keep moving, moving. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, on the <clears throat> on the cover of the memoir, the you know the 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 subtitle eventually gets to the word triumph. You know, right, I, I, and I, there's I, no way around it. If you're going to be mining uh, the past for any kind of public, uh, you know, publisher signs me to a deal. Or, originally, when I went to them, I had a poetry book, and it, but I realized if I try to just go to publishers with a poetry book, no one's going to want to put it out. 
But if I go to a publisher and I say, hey, I'll give you the, you know, if you will do the poetry book for me, I'll give you a memoir, you know. And they went, oh, okay, yeah, you know, because they, they can hear the cash registers ringing, you know, in, in the sound of that. So, I, I mean, I know how the game works. I, I you know, I've played it all my life. So, um, I'm, I'm not, as an artist, as a creative kind of person, I am perfectly willing to kind of uh, take on the challenge of writing a memoir and revisiting the past, but it, it's not really creatively where I live. I live in the present and I look to the future. That's that's the way that I work. You know, uh, Mick Jagger's out doing his thing now for uh, uh, Hackney Diamonds and, and, you know, somebody asked him and he goes, like, I'm never going to write a memoir. I am not a memoir guy. I, I've never been about the, the past. I, I'm a, I'm a future guy. And I get that, totally get that, you know. I'm sure in Keith Richards' case, you're talking about his, like, at some point somebody said, no, but Keith, here's the advance they're offering. And he went, oh, right, okay. Then, yeah, well, then I'll sit down and do an interview with the guy and he can transcribe it, you know. Well, I'll do that, but I'm not writing the fucking thing, you know. Like... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's probably how that would play it out, you know. In yeah. my case, yeah. I go, no, I'm going to sort of be like Springsteen. Springsteen for sure wrote his. And when I did research and read all these, I'm going to go on. I, I, like, I like what he's done here, you know. And he's kind of stripping off all his clothes and getting naked and walking out on the high wire. And he's putting some things at risk. And he's revealing certain things that, that um, are very kind of personal. I said, well, if we're gonna if I'm gonna do it, that's the way to do it, you know. Uh, sure. Yeah, you don't have to reveal everything. There's certain things about my wife or family that I would never write or reveal or talk about. You know, I wouldn't betray confidences. There's even certain things about triumph that I would never, I would never betray that whole thing of you know the 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 blue wall or the the things that happen in the locker room stay in the locker room. You know, right. I get that <laughs> and I understand that and I would respect that up to a point, but I also understand that, you know, there's people out there that they're standing in a bookstore and they're looking at the cover and they're reading the back and then they go, hmm, you know, well, what what might compel me to want to read this? And they're going to want a little bit of celebrity tingle. They're going to want some anecdotes that, you know, they're going to want some kind of stuff that feels like the dishing of dirt. So I, as a writer, I'm making these choices like this dirt stays confidential. This dirt, however, <laughs> reveal. Yes. I'll, yes. I'll put this in the book and we'll, I'll figure out a way to write it but I, I had a, a friend of mine a guy that I've known since high school and I had him like the triumph chapter is only one chapter of about 14 chapters with a with a forward and the acknowledgements at the end so there's like 16 chunks of stuff here and the triumph chapter is only one chunk but I had him read it like five times six times and he would get back to me and go yeah Rick sorry don't don't put this in there. You can't write this. And the reason I picked that friend of mine is because he had been both a member of uh, provincial parliament and federal parliament. So I really understood the nature of putting your foot in your mouth. You know, so, like I said, you know, l let me know here where you think I'm I'm crossing the line. Or so you know, I had him vet it for me, and uh, and I I you know I stood in the parking lot with Gil. Uh, two days ago, and he, he, he's he's perfectly fine. You know, he's good. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear. It. Like I said, I'm very excited about reading the book myself. And there's a lot of you know artists, legendary artists. I mean, Getty's coming to town on his book tour. Getty Lee, and and we talked about, or you talked about poems. And Burton Cummings has a book of poems coming out. So, you know, two friends of yours, obviously. But you know, again, this is this is where we're at. And like I said, this this book is going to be a great read. And I do actually think. The title is fitting obviously the you know light on the line but the part a backstage pass the rock star adventure conflict and triumph like you said is the key but uh, you know we want everyone listening to this podcast to check out obviously rick emmett.com to keep you know up to date on what your your ventures are you know moving forward i will ask you this do you think will there be any acoustic plays in the toronto area or some you know even in north america somewhere at some point or at this point you don't know well, I, I'll tell you what I do have on my calendar. Well, first of all, in, in back in July, I went to Penticton, B.C., because a guy that I know, Robert Ott, has a thing there called 
uh, song sessions, 97 North song sessions, and they, you know, highlight songwriters. And so in that context, he said, you want to come out and, you know, we'll just interview you. Maybe you play a few things. And I sure. went, yeah, okay. Sure. So, you know, people can find little video clips from that on YouTube of me doing that last July. I've got one that's coming up next April, which is the same kind of a thing. I, yeah, I get interviewed and there's a guitar sitting there and I'll might pick it up and play a few things. So there's that. Um, the big one, though, is that I'm going to Sweden in uh, for New Year's because I have some friends that uh, they, they have a band that plays for the World Junior Hockey Championships every every time those happen. And they, they sort of become the entertainment for the New Year's, you know, night. And so I got to know the guy that's kind of like the contractor producer guy for, for the, the, he has a tour company and he puts these packages together for folks staying in the hotel and going to the games. And then what are they, how are they going to entertain themselves over the course of the week and a half that they're there or whatever. So I got to know the guy cause he's, he, they, he got into this band thing where it was like, he was going, well, would the band play this set list? And he was starting to dictate set lists to the, the, band leader and i know the guy who was the band leader and uh and it's just cover songs you know different kinds sure. of ones and then he says um hey can my wife and i get up and sing uh, backgrounds as part of it because my wife and i are we, we sing in the church but she sings in the church choir and i was a singer back so blah 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 so now they're getting up and this is over the years they're sort of ingratiating themselves into this thing and they're starting to call it it's, it's the canadian cover crew now so now they're doing videos for youtube and he goes, well, let's see if we can get guest artists. So I get a call from my pal, Mike Schotten, who's the drummer, band leader in the thing. And he says, Rick, do you want to come into the studio and bring your choral electric sitar guitar? We're going to do a, a cover of the Redbone song, Come and Get Your Love. Do you know oh, that song? Yeah. Come and get your love. <laughs> come and get your love. So I got to play on this tune. It was kind of fun. And the guy goes, oh, I'll pay us something. I go, oh, just give the money to charity. Yeah, okay, this is fun. So then uh, it was like there was another one that I, I played on. I can't remember which one it was offhand now. But it was, oh, it was a, uh, the Delphonics. Didn't oh. I blow oh. your mind this time? Didn't I? Great song. So Great I played song. the near, 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 like the C target wow. on that one. So that was so much fun. And then they said, Rick, you've got to come to Sweden and be in the band. And I went, oh, I don't know, guys. And then they come to me and they go, Rick, we're thinking of doing uh, Eleanor Rigby with a string quartet. Do you want to do it? And I go, oh, uh, with a string quartet, you say? Okay, I'll do it. So that's up on YouTube. You can go and see it. Canadian cover crew, Rick Emmett, Eleanor Rigby. And it, it was great. It was lots of fun. I had a... Uh, uh, Paul McCartney is one of my heroes. And so to be able to sing one of his tunes with a real string quartet, it was like, oh man, this is great. So finally they said, come on, Rick, you got to come to Sweden. I go, okay, okay, okay. I'll come. I'll sit in with the band. And they're, they're going to do the string quartet over there. We're not going to do Eleanor Rigby, but they're going to do uh, like Magic Power, Hold On, Lay It on the Line. Uh, they're going to do these triumph songs with horns and a string quartet. And so I'm going to have an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar and I'm, my wife's going to get to come. And so that's going to be an adventure. And this is either going to make me go, I'm never doing this again. Or <laughs> I'm going, this was great. I, you know, I've got the bug again. I think I want to get, I'll see if I can get my visa for the United States and start this shit all over. I don't yes. know, you know, my wife. We Apparently you may be on to something. So I, I wish you great success with this. I'll be sure to check it out, Rick. And again, you know, I, I can't thank you enough. You know, a huge fan of you as a guitar player, vocalist, and everything you've done throughout your career. I, I wish you continued success with this book and whatever you do and great health and happy belated birthday. And, you know, I know you'll be out there rocking, but please pick up this book, lay it on the line of backstage past the Rockstar adventure conflict and triumph Rick Emmett and check out Rick Emmett.com. David made it presents. Thank you, Rick. Peace and love. Thank and you, David. Be well, Fantastic. and I will see you out there. Okay, buddy. Take, Take care. care. All right, I'm going to leave this now. Bye-bye. Bye now. Take care.